there was a single by Frankie Lane called Rain, 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 which was a kind of a, a hot gospel-y rock and roll thing. And I think that was about 1953. And that, that brought my head to a well, point. Well, um, it was totally different from the kind of syrupy ballads that, that we used to have, you know. Uh, people like, um, well, Johnny Ray was one of them. I didn't like him. Yeah. My sisters used to love all that Dennis Lotus, Frank Sinatra crap, and I hated it. Couldn't bear Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, which might seem strange since I'm a jazz band, but I've just never liked her. Uh, so I was ready for it because there was honking saxophones going on in the background. So although um, rock and roll hits with, with quite an atomic blast mm. uh, into a generation that had never had any culture before, there's no such thing as teenage culture, there was no such thing as a teenager. Um, there were juvenile delinquents, we all knew about them, but we didn't know about teenagers. What about teddy boys and things? Were you in any of that sort of gangs? Or I was a little too young, I escaped right. that. The, the junior Teds would try and grow sideburns and stuff like that, but um, the fashion though, the teddy boy fashions were good. I always wanted a black and white fleck jacket. Uh, it, they looked rather like ambulatory dandruff coming along <laughs> the road, you know, and, and they would wear drape, drape coats where the very first button was about ghouly level, you know, and the rest came down to about here. And, um, oh, velvet collars too. And of course, um, most jackets were double-breasted in those days, the, the, the loose lounge jacket as they came to be known. Were they expensive um, to buy or? My goodness me, yes, you could only yeah. get them from specialist shops, Ted shops we used to call right. them. Um, I read oh, just a couple of decades ago how the Edwardian fashion started with the poshos, you know, the upper middles. I, I never knew that. As mm. far as I was concerned, it was a street thing. And the Ted fights used to be very, very famous long before the mods and rockers. The I was going to say, because that Teddy Boy thing sounds midway between mods and rockers. Yes, it was. style, mm. but a lot of them went down the rocker route, didn't they? So. Yeah, they did. My, um, at school, w there were younger brothers of, of Ted's in my class. And I, remember, I always remember it chilled my blood. He's probably dead now, so I'll give you his real name. Austin Rose's big brother, Billy. I heard them talking outside the school while they were waiting for Austin to come out. And I heard Billy say, Well, I think 40 of us ought to be able to do 60 of them. They ain't much. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> so that made me a, a pacifist right there. Right. I wasn't a pacifist for uh, political or social reasons. I was a bloody coward. There was no way I was going on the streets with people like that. Because <laughs> no. they did have a very violent reputation. Was it mm. knives or razors or was it? Yeah, um, knuckle dusters. Uh, well, that's pretty violent in itself, isn't it? Yes, flick knives, razors, straight razors, you know. Um, of course, it all came from the Kosh Boy era uh, during the war and shortly after the war. You know, Billy Hill and um, the, later on the Craze. Um, would all use those uh, that kind of hardware against business rivals, <laughs> and and it get I guess it just migrated into street level. Oh, it was very. Do you know at my school in um, in the uh, late fifties, we used to go. It was in Aston, and we used to go to a hop every lunchtime called the Bingo, not far from um, from the deep heart of Aston. This was. And uh, even in the daylight, that was not a good idea. But we were mob-handed, there were plenty of us, so we were okay. Anyway, as soon as you got to the bingo, the dancers, uh, I wasn't one of them, I, I couldn't jive. Um, learned a little bit that I was never any good. But the dancers would take off the, the school jackets and, um, and uh, pull the shirts out of their uh, trousers, you know. And as they did this, you found that most of them were wearing sheath knives. That wasn't against the law in those days. Uh, in the Scouts, for example, I joined the Scouts in order to get a sheath knife and a big fat leather belt because that was just for protection. But my best protection was the fact that I could run like a rabbit. <laughs> and it, and, and uh, that was where all, all the early rock and roll hits would be on for about an hour during the lunchtime. And then the kids pretending to be grown up uh, put the school blazer back on and off back to school. I kind of envied those young white rock and rollers, but by this time, uh, the stuff I liked uh, had begun to take on a, a somewhat more sinister, shady hue about it. I'd, I'd begun to realise that the people I liked most of all were black singers, right. uh, like Little Richard. And um, being brought up 
as a casual racist the way we all were in those days, mm -hmm. it was a bit tricky to get little Richard Record through the through the front door. <laughs> right. um, but my dad got to like Fats Domino, uh, a couple of songs of his anyway. He liked Blueberry Hill, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, during the lull, uh, well, we just ignored the late 50s and concentrated on our early 50s collection of singles. Um, 1956 was the golden year for rock and roll. Right. Wonderful. I've got Elvis Presley number one. The original. Oh, have HMV. you really? It's not in brilliant condition, but it's the original HMV. You know one. the picture on the front of yeah. that with his lip over, yeah. the, over the back of his head? My mm. mother said, he ain't right. He's never right. Yeah. And she had no other vocabulary to express the revulsion that his uh, face, if she'd seen the rest of him, oh dear. <laughs> the, the most bizarre thing on it is, because he called it rock and roll, it seemed to be called rock and roll before anybody else knew it was rock and roll, because even the sleeve notes on the back said, he's a jazz phenomenon. Did it really? Really, really, the first lines it says, Elvis Presley is a jazz phenomenon. I have no idea. I'll, I'll show it you sometime. Mm, yes. Because when I read that, I thought, blimey, it's called rock and roll, but clearly, when they were printed up the sleeves, rock and roll wasn't that well known. That's extraordinary. Yeah. I had um, the Bill Haley and the Comets EP, um, either late 55 or late, fif no, late 54 it must have, no, I don't know, anyway, I was either 12 or 13. And the sleeve notes on there say, this is not rhythm and blues, it's not country and western, it's rock and roll, where the music rocks and rolls all the way down. Well, I didn't know what the hell rhythm and blues was, although I'd been listening to it casually, you know, uh, and I do mean casually because there were no rock and roll programs on the radio, yeah. no, except for uh, Jamboree. Uh, Alan Freed, who was later in, embroiled in the payola scandals, yeah. you remember those? I do, yeah. Well, you remember oh, reading oh, about I've read, them. Oh, I certainly mm. read about them, yeah. Well, Alan Freed had uh, uh, what he called the rock and roll Jamboree. What, what you'd guess, the Jamboree was a country and western station and um, but for um, 30 minutes uh, every Saturday night you'd get rock and roll and you didn't always know which 30 minutes that would uh, that would encompass but I used to go to, go to bed with um, a crystal set under the pillow and, and, and so I heard um, people like Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins and Little Richard and uh, it was a very white station by the way you didn't get too many black ones on there but I loved the the white players as well you know and I used to imitate them I had a a board similar to the one that the that the coffee's on and I had a broom handle that I'd you know uh, tie to it or nail to it or something and I just used to do this in front of the mirror you know and practice all my Elvis moves <laughs> <laughs> of course I couldn't play but it was just Air guitar wasn't invented in the yeah. 80s, believe me, nor even the 70s. I got that nailed in 1956. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got into the blues. I think it was um, the flip sides of a couple of Chuck Berry records would come out as blues instrumentals with Johnny Johnson doing that wonderful piano trilling thing that, that he would do. Uh, I was captivated. And in fact, um, uh, there was a, a type of throwback of which I was one. You weren't a Ted because you weren't old enough. Uh, you weren't a rocker because you weren't hard enough. But we just did not enjoy any of the music that was coming out of our own country in those days. I, I never really cared for the Beatles for a long, long time. Um, when they first started, I loved how they did and, and could do stuff like 20 Flight Rock and Carl Perkins stuff which I, I couldn't even begin to do. I could hardly form a chord. Yeah, we used to puzzle over those things. See, we, you, you could get a chord book, which was, um, which would, is, is the word tabulate, you get a shape. I'm a non-musician, well, you'll get to it. You'd get, um, <laughs> you'd get a page with all of this on, and it would tell you where to put your fingers to form a specific chord. Um, and I, I used that for a time, but then the blues ruined me, because I kept reading how uh, John Lee Hooker and Robert Johnson and people like that um, would all just play notes. They didn't bother with chords. Muddy Waters, he, he run a slide across his strings like quite a lot of the others did. And I thought, wow, this is the way I want to go. Bugger the chords. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn the street way. So I spent three years um, playing notes and and listening to the records, uh, duplicating what I heard, but. Um, 
magnificently and scornfully eschewing the actual chord shapes, the last thing I was going to do was learn music. I just wanted to be authentic. I wanted to get into the blues um, the way that I thought my, my heroes had. But of course, many of them knew chords that, that I didn't even know existing. In fact, the, 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 the first picture of Robert Johnson you, you see on his first LP, he's actually forming a bar chord. Uh, and bar chords were something I thought only white boys did. <laughs> And to a degree, um, a lot of them, like Eddie Cochran, for example, and Buddy Holly, they, they hardly played bar chords. They played country style, you know, that, that they'd play, um, they'd play uh, people like Joe Brown, who'd, who'd learn functionally and, and formally, would, would play a G like that. But the country way is that way. See, that, that's a bar chord. The bar means you, you, you transpose everything with your forefinger. And that's a bar chord, but... That was my bar chord, <laughs> and, and same for all the others, really. In 1958, um, Dwayne Eddy had this LP out uh, called, I think it was just Dwayne Eddy, come to think of it, or Twangy Guitar, something like that. And there was an instrumental there called 330 Blues. God, that did it for me. It started off with a dark rundown, um, and, and there was a... Long, swirling, picked guitar notes. There was uh, his his saxophone player grooving along behind him, you know. Piano rumbling away in the background. Oh, I love that. But I still wouldn't have said, uh, this is a blues. I, I, it just would never have occurred to me to, to do so. Um, but I kind of got into the blues from there. Uh, then Ray Charles came along. Uh, so that helped me with jazz. Again, I'd heard Louis Armstrong and, and Chris Barber, so I was ready for that sort of thing. Um, and uh, the first blues I ever played was almost certainly a Lightning Hopkins song. I, I'm not sure now um, which one it was. But the thing about Lightning was you could sit with your guitar and, and play against his records, because he always played in E natural, right. or, or A. He almost never um, used any other chords but E, A and B7 or A, D and E. He'd capo sometimes and other times he might string the whole guitar down a little bit or up a little bit. So that was easy to learn to. Uh, then John Lee Hooker baffled the hell out of me because I knew there was something going on but I couldn't find his chords anywhere and then I accidentally did. Uh, he, he was usually an open G. The idea of open tuning was one I, I, I didn't know about. I was doing it before I learned about it. I was just twisting my strings up and down because I wanted to duplicate that sound, you know. And um, So I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was, I was getting there. And it was the guitar that seemed to be getting you, because if I hear Lightning Hopkins, I'm listening to him telling stories. And if I'm listening to John Lee Hooker, I'm getting a beat. Uh, but it was always the guitar that was focused you right from then, was it? Yes, it was. I, I wanted to play the piano, and, and I've started learning again, but I, I'm... I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. I, I, I overplay when I'm playing the piano. Um, so I, I taught myself to boogie. So now I can't stop my left hand playing, you know. All, all a piano player really needs to do in a group is just stroke and then do all the, the magic with his right hand. But as soon as I start doing that, my left hand starts right. doing that. I'll get over it. <laughs> and that magic riff, uh, I'll play it for you. The Robert Johnson riff isn't what you'd expect of Elmore James. It's something like this. And so on and so forth which was a great disappointment to me. But in point of fact, the only person I've ever seen who can play Dust My Broom the way uh, Robert Johnson did it, it was Dust My Broom when he wrote it, by the way, not Blues. Uh, Dust My Broom means get the hell out. It's another way of... <laughs> is uh, little Jack Blackman, whom I hate with a consuming loathing. <laughs> He's like a uh, quarter of my age, and he can play ten times as well as I can, even when I'm trying hard. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a genius, that boy. And, and I watched him do Dust My Broom, and I thought, it's easy. Why didn't I think of that? It's not easy, because I still get it wrong. He show, he's told me how he does it, and I still can't do it. <laughs>